Hello everyone, welcome to Naomi's Bookshelf. I am so sorry for filming this late and putting it up late, but um, you can hear one of my problems. Uh, anyways, we are getting into the end of October wrap up and also I need to film uh, my mid-November wrap up. So we're just gonna do them all in one video. I feel like that might just be a little easier for me. Uh, especially with my voice not coping very well. So at the point of last time, I had finished two of the three prompts for Victober. We're gonna go over those ones first. So Victober, I had done Poetry of Oscar Wilde and I had also done um, The Woman in White for Mental Health or Disability Rep, I believe was the one. Uh, but I did do these other ones as well. So uh, first of all, I read The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This one was published, I believe, in the 1890s. And this is a short story collection of Sherlock Holmes. So I found this to be really good overall. I really enjoyed it. I don't remember what I gave it. One second. I gave it a three as a short story collection. Not all of them are going to hit home with me, but overall it was a good impression. So I'm excited to read more short stories from Sherlock Holmes, uh, World and Canon, and especially by Arthur Conan Doyle. So. Yeah, this one is an earlier short story collection of Sherlock Holmes. For the prompt of, I believe it was a coming of age story, I might be mixing this up, I chose uh, Tri Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. I read this one with Emily from Novel Novels and we both had different experiences. I found this one to be very engaging and very quick. The problem with it was, was at points it was too quick. So I wasn't able to really grasp what every detail was going. I had to reread a few sections, but I gave this one overall a four star. It hooked me and that's kind of what I needed at that moment. And I do think that this is a really great story to go back and revisit. I don't think this is a children's book. I think this is like a YA book based on, you know, the content, but I do think that handled appropriately, it's great for all ages. So I think it's a really fun, interesting, uh, treasure hunt story. The last one I read for Victober was The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. I did it. I read a Hardy and I am so proud of myself because I am not a depressing loving reader. Um, I like my books to be happy and joyful and super fun and that is not this by any standard. I am giving this one a three, so it's not a bad book. Um, I was actually in a moment where, when I tried picking this one up, I had picked up The uh, the Secret Agent and Brides Had Revisited, and both of them, I was like, I am not feeling this, so I'm chosen to uh, DNF them and unhaul them, as it was just not working for me. I read, I think, a third of The Secret Agent, and it just wasn't working for me. And so I was like, maybe this will, work and instantly I was hooked. So it was doing its job. It got me invested. And even though I am not a depressing loving reader, I did enjoy overall the storyline. Um, I just felt like it was too sad. And I know that's a hardy thing. So uh, I am hesitant to pick up more of his work just because I know my sadness threshold and I do not like it to go below too much. But I am interested to pick up, um, oh, I can't remember the name right now. Um, but I'm not interested in Tess of the D'Urbervilles. I'm not interested in that one. I'm not interested in Jude, Jude the Obscure. None of those I am interested in because it just sounds like this is way more happy than those ones. And that's not a good standard for me. So I did read this one and I gave it three stars. And thank you to Victober for uh, helping me to pick up my first Hardy. And hopefully, my not my last Hardy. I'm hoping I will enjoy more. And I can't remember what, it, then what I'm thinking is. Um, but... I will put a picture up here of the one I'm thinking of that I do want to read still. And the other ones I'm thinking of just getting rid of because I don't know if they're gonna be my cup of tea. I actually read another <laughs> Victober book and I forgot about it. That was Dracula. I read this one and I read it for the watch and read prompt. So um, I did a whole vlog about my thoughts of this chapter by chapter and I will link that for you if you are interested. But then I also watched um, the very, very old, I think it's 1940s version or 30s version of Dracula. And I found that to be a very interesting interpretation. I also started to watch the 2020 version um, by the BBC and I had to turn it off. I could not last more than 15 minutes because it was, well, it was just too horror. Um, it was so creepy and so gross and I was like, I, I can't. So 
I moved on. Um, but I'm happy to say that I read this and I am giving it a four star. I really actually enjoyed this one. And I think because I'm such a more, I don't know, well-rounded reader or I'm a well-rounded classics reader now that this one was able to get a better rating from me. So yeah, really enjoyable actually, as this follows some vampire hunters as they are trying to get Dracula and how he's trying to uh, foil their plans or he's trying to thwart them. Uh, it was interesting because the 1940s version was very much vampires as opposed to vampire hunting. Very different perspective, which I thought was interesting. But yeah, really enjoyed this one. I would recommend rereading it if you've never enjoyed it before, but you are now more into classics. So that's something uh, I would recommend. I ended up reading two Christie's in October, one of which was The Secret Adversary, and this one is the final Tommy and Tuppence book that I needed to read. So this marked off a series of mine to read. This one was good, but I definitely felt like it was a little far-fetching at points. Um, and it was a little, I don't know, it, it just didn't feel quite right for me. And I felt like some of the things were really obvious and some of the things were just maybe as me observing a lot, but at the same time, it, it got a three. So not a bad thing, but this is the final book I had to read in the Tommy Tuppen series. So that series is done and off my to read list. Um, and I'm happy to say I've read all of Agatha Christie's one series. I have finished one complete series of hers and that is a good thing. I also unexpectedly um, saw that our local theater was putting on The Mousetrap. So I went with my friend and um, it was just so much fun. I had watched a YouTube version before, so I knew what had happened and I like watching the plays better. And so when I went to watch it again, it was really cool to watch it and know who done it and all the things. Um, it was really fun and I actually really enjoyed it more the second time because it was in person, not just on a screen. And I would recommend going to the Mousetrap if you can or finding the version online like I talked about. Um, I watched it last year for the Christie's Missing Readathon, which we're doing again this year, by the way. I would like to just put a plug there. We are doing the Miss Christie's Missing Readathon again in December, but last time I did watch The Mouse Chat for it. So it was great to revisit and it's a four star play. So for the rest of October, I read tons of arcs, tons and tons of arcs. Um, I have been on an arc binge in the last few months. I think I've read like 12 within the last two months and I still have more I need to read this month. So it's been a binging of arcs, which is not a bad thing. It's something I am very happy about. But it's also something I mean, I don't have a lot of uh, physical books. So the first arc that I did read was Ocean's World. This one is by uh, Alexa Panavega and Carlos Panavega. These two were um, reality stars and they have written a couple books together. This I think is their first children's book and it's about the ocean and the animals there, the different kind of shells and where they come from. And it's like about their Hawaiian beaches essentially so uh very interesting and i give you that one a four star i didn't love the story content but i did enjoy it and i also loved the uh the explanations like there were little factoids on each page about certain animals which i thought was really great so yeah definitely recommend that one and i also read uh frank sinatra and the mafia murders which is a very different term than ocean's world but this one is by douglas thompson and mike rothmiller so this one is a nonfiction about Frank Sinatra and how he was involved with the mafia. It's as simple as that, but at the same time, there were so many things I didn't know. Like I loved Frank Sinatra growing up. I loved his movies and his music and my friend and I would have like sleepovers. We went up to like 16, 17, 18 and we would be like, I'm bringing Frank, you bring the snacks because we'd bring Frank Sinatra movies. So it's just really something I've never, um, looked into, but I didn't know he wasn't a greatly uh, admired person from Hollywood. So I knew that much, but this really shone the light on what he was like and all of his family things, um, how his <laughs> friends were treated. And Sammy Davis Jr. got a short end of the stick in a lot of ways. Racism was high and it was just really interesting. I really enjoyed learning about Frank Sinatra through this path of, uh, his life and how it's connected to crime. So that one got a four star from me and I would recommend it a lot. Another arc that I read was The Woodville Women. This one is by Sarah J. Hodder. This one is about 
the three women named Elizabeth Woodville or Elizabeth in that Woodville family line. So, of course, we have the first one who was married to, oh, goodness, I'm going to forget, Edward VI. He's an Edward. Um, Richard III's brother. <laughs> and then also her daughter who married Henry VII. And then her granddaughter through a different line uh, who was in the court of Henry VIII. So all three were named Elizabeth, and I thought it was a really great look at history and that particular time in history and how these women survived and how they impacted their surroundings and how the people around them saw them and how they were treated during that time era. So I thought it was a really interesting book, and I really enjoyed learning about the Tudor era and just before, like the end of the War of the Roses, through this period. So recommend, highly recommend The Woodville Woman. I also read The Pirate's Wife, which is now out. Um, I, I think it came out November 7th. And this one is about uh, Sarah Kidd, who was the wife of Captain Kidd, and how she got into her marriage, because she definitely had some struggles along the way. But then also how she was the wife of a pirate, how that impacted her life, and how it also impacted her life after the fact. It was not a long book, but I felt like it was really engaging. It talked about how Sarah was married to so many men and how they all died. Um, but it was very interesting because it talked a lot about her strength and her tenacity and what, what to, and what it would have been like to be the wife of an outlaw or a criminal and how that would have impacted her social standing from the beginning of the book to the end. And I really enjoyed this look at piracy through the eyes of their home life, their families. So I would really recommend this one. And this one is by Daphne Palmer Gina Coppolopoulos. I butchered that, I'm sure. I'd recommend picking it up. It is fantastic. That one also got a four star. I also finally finished, after many, many times of talking about this book, The Woman of Rothschild. This one's by Natalie Livingston. This one is a book about the Rothschild family through only the eyes of the women, essentially, or through their lives. And I thought it was really cool because, well, one, I don't know anything about the Rothschild family. I know nothing. So uh, I was really learning about new history to me. But then I also found it really fascinating to learn about a family through the women who typically are told to be quiet and sit down and not engage themselves in business. So very cool, very fascinating. And I was just reading another book, a nonfiction. Um, actually, I have it on my list here that you will see soon. But I was reading it and it was like, this person's money was managed by the Rothschilds. And I was like, I know that now. I know who they are now. Um, so it was really cool. But yeah, I would recommend this one. It is a little long, about almost 500 pages, but it is very in-depth and very interesting as it covers many generations of women and their lives as they were either connected to the Rothschild family by marrying out or by marrying in. And it is very fascinating. A book that was not an ARC, but that I did read um, as an ebook, so I don't have it, is Enola Holmes. And it's the first three graphic novels of uh, the series by Nancy Springer, but it's adapted by Serena Blanco. Blansko. Um, this one is a very interesting art style. And I think the thing I loved about reading the Enola Holmes series was that uh, it always talked about her disguises and how she would look different and how she would put on these wigs and these outfits. And then in the graphic novel series, you get to see that happening. So it's really just cool to see um, on the page as it covered the first three books. But I think it kind of covered the first three and a half almost. Um, but yeah, it was a very interesting graphic novel uh, bind up. But you could always get them individually, I guess. I think it was very interesting and very enjoyable to read, especially after reading the other series, the whole original series. The last arc that I read in October was Tutankhamun's Trumpet. I'm going to get this title right this time. Ancient Egypt in 100 Objects from the Boy King's Tomb by Toby Wilkinson. So this one is like it says. Um, it's broken down to 10 sections, but every section has 10 items related to it. So like for the section about um, domestic life, it would be like bread or um, a staff or hunting equipment or whatever. And I don't think maybe hunting equipment was in that one, but you get the idea, 10 items related to domestic life in that. And then there was a section about life after death and how they had his body, how they had his children's bodies, like those different things all connected and one group of 10. So it was really interesting to read about the different things in his life and how that impacted, how that was reflective, I guess, of all the other people around him, the poorest of the poor, those in the high culture, but also how they... Uh, 
reflect ancient Egypt's culture and living style at that time and what they valued. So it was really cool to see that aspect um, and look at ancient Egypt through a different lens of artifacts. So I'd recommend it as well. It was also a four star. I had a great ARC reading month, I will say. It was great. I also listened to the next uh, radio theater Chronicles of Narnia. So I finished the uh, Prince Caspian one and that one I'm giving five stars. I really enjoy re-listening to it. It's a nostalgia thing for me as well as being a real thing because I really enjoy the nostalgia of it. I listened to those growing up as a kid. The last thing that I read in October that I haven't talked about yet were um, Luke and John from the Bible. So I read the last two gospels and no, now we'll enter into November where I finished the entire rest of the Bible. I finished everything. Um, I finished the rest of the New Testament and I, I really loved reading this and I loved the, the connections I made and I loved just binging it essentially and how it really opened my eyes to things I'd never seen before. I'm going to make a whole video about my experience overall for the year. Um, but I will say I recommend this greatly if you are at all interested. And I will be doing a challenge on Storygraph for reading the Bible in one year chronologically. Well, not chronologically if you don't want to, but I would recommend it that way. So the book that I mentioned in regards to the women of Rothschild was Murdered Midas. So this is by Charlotte Gray. This is about a man who was originally American and then he purchased, um, maybe not purchased, he got Canadian citizenship and then from there he ended up buying a place in the Bahamas and living there almost all year round. Um, he is, his name was, oh, what was his name? Henry, Harry Oaks, Harry Oaks. Um, so he had a gold mine in Canada and then he was very, very wealthy. Um, this talks about his becoming wealthy, about his family and then going down to the Bahamas and then getting murdered in the Bahamas. Um, and then the aftermath of the case. I thought this one was okay. I, <laughs> I liked so many things about it, but at the same time, I was just kept waiting and waiting and waiting to get to the true crime element, to get to the actual murder because it is a true crime book. That's what it's advertised as, not a biography. Um, there, I think they're different. Biographies and true crime, I believe, are different unless like the person you're reading about is a mobster like Frank Sinatra, <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? Like it's, they're different than a fully encompassing story. So yeah, this one got a three star from me, but it was interesting to learn about this man's rise to power and fast decline, uh, especially as he traveled from, what was it, Maine? No, it was one of those little states, then going up to Ontario, becoming a citizen with his new wife, who was Australian, and then going down to the Bahamas and what happened to him there. So yeah, really enjoyable for the most part. But like I said, I kept waiting for the true crime element and it wasn't what it was sold as. So unfortunately, it's a three star for that reason, but a good book. I also read one of these. I purposely picked this up for TBR Clue for a book from the 90s or 1900s. I mean, not 90s. This one, I believe, was published in 1994, 1996. Um, this is The Baffling Whodunit Puzzles, and this is by Jim Kuzak, or Suzak. This one is really short. It's like 90, 95 pages. But my problem with this series, they're always going to get a three star from me, I think, because you have to have intentional knowledge to go into this. So like one of the cases was like, oh, what about this? And it's like, ah, oh, that person doesn't have the right information. So that's not the victim, like that's not the suspect. Like, but I don't have the right information. So how is that practical for me solving this book? So some of them were interesting. Some of them are really obvious, but then some of them were like, you must know this, this, and this. I remember one from the previous one was like, you must know football signs. It's like, seriously, I don't know football signs. I don't watch football, but uh, yeah. So overall, it's a really interesting idea, but I think there are better ones out there. So yeah, three stars for this one. I also listened to an audiobook, which is called, uh, sorry, Fitness for Everybody. And this one's by Meg Boggs. This is by a woman who has been looked down on for her being a plus size body for so long. And she talks about in this one how she grew to love her body, but also how she got into powerlifting and how fitness is for everyone, no matter your size or your shape and it was very good. I really enjoyed it. It gets a four star from me and it's a pretty short listen too. I really enjoy that she was really honest and open about her struggles with her body image, but then also how raising her daughter and after the fact, 
going through postpartum depression and mental health and how that impacted her life as well. So I would really recommend it. If you're wanting a fitness book that's really inclusive and talking about how to be healthy and to embrace yourself, really recommend it. I enjoyed it a lot and it was like a three hour audiobook. So yeah, fitness for everybody. I have also since taken out of my library two more of these little kid books. So these are both ballet books and I have a little issue with them. So um, this one, Swan Lake, it ends very sad. But at the same time, um, I don't remember. Yeah, it kind of was like, oh, they're in love and then that's it. And then they die in the end. I was like, I'm sorry for spoiling the ending, by the way. You didn't know. Um, but yeah, so I kind of kept true to that. But I was like, this was okay. So I gave this one a four star because of that. And then um, Sleeping Beauty, <laughs> I had a problem with this one because I, so I gave this one three stars. For, so these are not like the other books where like um, they were just pictures. They have like actual story being told. And I really struggled with this one because this is Sleeping Beauty. And I feel like one of the big things about Sleeping Beauty is that she is kissed without consent. And I have been a huge advocate for consent my entire time in childcare. Um, even when it comes to little things like holding hands or to, um, you know, taking someone's toy. All of those things are really important to me because consent is huge as the person grows and becomes an adult. So this one did not negate anything about the fact that she is kissed without consent. And it did say, oh, that when in a hundred years she'll meet or her true love will see her and then come and like kiss her um, and wake her up. And I was like, I wish that this message, I know it's a classic, but I wish it had been changed to acknowledge the fact that the consent was not there. Um, and I, I know it's a difficult thing because it's like, yeah, well, it's a classic and yeah, that's the original story. But I also am like, that kind of needs to change in this modern era. So yeah, three stars for Sleeping Beauty. I also read Murder is Easy. This one I am giving four stars. Um, this is the fourth Superintendent Battle book. And I enjoyed it a lot. I knew going in that Superintendent Battle would not be present very much. And I was right. He appeared with like 30 pages left in the book. But I enjoyed that, the twist it took. I at one point was thinking along the right path and then I'm like, no. And then I was like, no, that's gotta be that person instead. So I was 100% fooled, I'd say. Um, except for maybe 99% fooled. And I enjoyed this like twist. It's very much more like a thriller than a normal cozy as it's about these people in the village who are getting killed off. And um, yeah. It's really interesting because the serial killer has no M.O. and how it all looks natural, but it's too many coincidences. So I really enjoyed this one, surprisingly. Um, and I would say maybe it's closer to a three than a five, but at the same time, it's a four and I would recommend it. My voice is going and we have a lot more to go. So let's get into some arcs. I'm sorry if the camera changed. My phone died um, or, or was overfilled. So first arc was the battles that created England uh, 793 to 1100. And this is by Alfred, or sorry, by author Arthur C. Wright. Um, this one is a, what it says it is. It's about all the battles that happened during that era and how that created the borders of England, essentially. So these are some of my nonfiction November books. Um, I really enjoyed learning about the battles of England during that time. I've done a lot of learning lately about that, a lot of books, about a lot of lectures, different things about the medieval era. So I thought this was a really interesting look at that, specifically about the battles and how that was impacting um, different movements of groups of people or troops or however that worked out. So interesting book and I would recommend. All right, I also read Super Spy Science. This one's by Katherine Harkup. And this one is about the science of James Bond. Um, each chapter was called like 001, 002, 004. Like it was really fun. But each chapter, I think, because I'm not a massive Bond fan, um, they each chapter covered, I think, an individual movie in a way. Like it talked about one title of a movie and then one item and covered books like all of elements from all of the movies and all of the books. Like one was about his mental health or Bond's mental health, which should be shattered by the way. <laughs> um, or how guns were used or weaponry, weaponry, um, secrets or government influence or all these different things or each in their own individual chapters. And I found it to be an interesting 
look at that and I gave it four stars. I love Katherine Harkup's writing and how she takes characters from Shakespeare and sees how they die or how she takes the poisons of Agatha Christie and looks at them. But also now how she did James Bond and seeing if it's practical, which I hate to tell you, it's not. <laughs> But I also read Meet the National Animals, and these are fun facts, fun animal facts from around the world by Catherine Vernich um, or Vietch. This one is a kid's book, and it talks about national animals from uh, multiple countries. So each page was a, like, the camel's the national animal of this one. I can't remember which one it was, but like, let's say the flamingo. The flamingo is the national animal of the Bahamas, and, he's, and the uh, flamingo is joining the party. And like, something fun things about the flamingos so really cool stuff about it and I thought that was really interesting as a kid's book to look at animals but also look at our wonderful world and how I don't know how varied all the animals are and how we need to appreciate them all then I also read the Enola Holmes the second graphic novel book which was following the fourth fifth and sixth actual books in the graphic uh well in the Enola Holmes series sorry about that um, this one, I give four stars. I enjoyed the art style, like I said, showing her different outfits and her disguises. And my trigger thing from book six was um, in there, obviously, because it's a big plot point, And I did not like it. So in the sixth book, there's a woman who pretends to have an illness and does not. So that was something I think is worth noting. I also want to say that that book bind up um contained also information from the seventh book in the original published series so it is an all-encompassing book uh group my last two arcs one of them was medieval royal mistresses mischievous women who slept with kings and princes by julia a hickey i did not like this one i felt like it was all about the men and nothing about the women and what they were forced to go through because of their gender and their looks i also thought that it was very disappointing in how every single was like, oh, this lady and how she lived here. And then the, the men and the men and men. I was like, this is not what I signed up for. So disappointing. Um, and I gave it two stars. My last arc was The Hidden Prince by Tessa Afshar. Five stars. Fantastic. This one has migraine rep. Migraine rep. So excited. Um, and this one's about a woman who has to flee from her life, uh, for her life from Babylon. And she ends up entering into a very important situation. I think you should go in knowing no more and enjoy the ride because it is a fantastic ride. Love Tessa Ashar and so fantastic. Okay, the last couple books I had were, um, one was my first book for Historthon and that one is Shakespeare's Dark Lady, The Lost Story of Amelia Bassano Lehner. This one is by Sally O'Reilly and this was like 35 pages. It was okay. It was not good, which I didn't expect it to be great. So um, it's just about a potential muse of Shakespeare. That's all it was. And the last book I have is The Love Poems of Rumi. This one's translated by Nadir Kalali, and this one was fantastic. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Four stars, poetry collection. I tabbed some poems, which were my favorites, and I think that the, um, the art in here was beautiful to go over along with each poem, and it was really a great read, and I am so excited to read more. I actually have some up for my library now. One more thing that is I am reading, and I failed to do my buddy read with Nikki and Berna, and I am making progress, Berna and Nikki, I promise. So I am now this far, and I'm on chapter 40, no, 45, I think, actually. So I am making progress on The Leopard by Joe Nesbo, and I will be finishing it this week. I am guaranteeing myself I have a finished book because this is my last TBR Clue book. So that is something I am working on, Nikki and Berna, I promise. So that is it for all of the books I read in the last half of October and the first half of November. I'm sorry if I'm going fast now. My storage is about to die. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you read for the end of October or for the beginning of Nuance Fiction November. Or what you are planning on reading. And if you're just taking it easy, what are you reading? I'm excited to know. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.